Hello everyone, today we are going to learn about the hammer, specifically how to use it. The hammer is an opportunity driven weapon. You want to look for short openings so that you can get in a couple of power hits, duck out, and then look for your next opportunity. While there aren't as many crazy combos compared to other weaponry, since the hammer is so opportunity driven, knowing which attacks are worth it and which attacks can be performed in the time that you have is very important. What we have in power, we lack in range. With the hammer being an incredibly short range weapon, flying enemies will be the bane of your existence. Talking to you, Kushala. Please land. Not only that, but we need very precise hammer placement in order to really capitalize on using the hammer. You also cannot chop off tails as a hammer user either, so don't bother trying to go for tail hits unless it's your only option or you're fighting like Nergigante or something because it has spikes on its tail that can be broken, blah, blah, blah. Your job as the hammer is to find the face of the monster and or other breakable weak spots and then bash them until the monster dies. Let's go over the attacks of the hammer. The most basic combo is the standing still triangle, triangle, triangle combo, or Y if you're on Xbox. I'm gonna be using PS4 buttons for this tutorial. The first two hits are a little mild with the third hit being the main appeal of this combo. The final swing does animation lock you for a little while though. If you start hitting triangle with your weapon sheathed while running, it tacks on another two weak hits to the front of the combo, giving us a five hit combo. But there's basically no reason to use this combo as it takes way too long to complete. If you're in a spot where an enemy is downed, there is definitely a better combo to use than this one. Next, we'll discuss the hammer charge, which is done by holding R2. There are three levels of charge indicated by a whooshing sound effect, a rumble in your controller, and a visual cue via your armor pulsing red. By releasing R2, you'll move into an attack or combo based on your movement and the amount of charge. One level of charge or one pulse will give you a two hit combo opportunity, the charged side blow into follow up. The follow-up is the one that hits pretty hard, and this is a relatively quick combo. Among the faster combos that you have access to, but definitely not the fastest. You can use it when you have slightly more time compared to just getting in one hit. However, the ability that I use the most, and is probably the quickest big hit that you'll be able to perform, is the uppercut. Charge up to two pulses, or level two, and release to go into an uppercut. The uppercut is performed whether you are standing still or moving forward, but if you are moving forward, you'll get a little more forward momentum. This is a very quick attack that hits relatively hard for how quickly it is performed and will probably be one of your most commonly used moves. A few of these in a row will either break something or knock out a monster, at least in solo play. The three charge or three pulse charged swing will activate in two ways, depending on if you're standing still or moving at the time. Standing still gives us the charged big bang, which is a two hit combo ending with a strong attack. The moving variant is essentially a whirlwind like move with the opportunity to end it early by hitting triangle. There are different stages of exiting this move. The later you exit the ability, the different the exit ability itself is. You'll either do a spinning side smash, a follow-up, or a strong upswing with the later attacks hitting harder. However, this move is pretty risky as it requires a very long animation that you are locked to for a while. It's not a horrible attack to use by any means. It applies status effects rapidly and ends with a pretty beefy swing. It just takes a long time to do and you're vulnerable the entire time. Hammers do not have any blocking capabilities. Just do this move at your own risk. An example would be while Teostra is doing its steady fire breath attack, same with Valhazak's similar breath attack, etc. Now, hitting circle while charging will give you a boost in damage, will reset the pulse counter back to zero, and will slightly change your three pulse standing still combo. Instead of two hits, you'll do three, with the first two being quick hits. If you ever hit that three charge pulse state and you don't want to do your spinning attack or you just need to reset, hit circle to go back to the beginning and recharge your charge. 
this charged state where your hammer glows will last until you're hit or you sheath your weapon and also gives a little bit of hyper armor so that you don't get knocked around by your team. The hyper armor won't do a ton against monsters though, so don't charge up thinking that you have the power of the rock steady mantle. You can also dodge roll out of your charged state to reset the charges, but doing so takes longer for that first charge pulse to happen compared to if you just power charge again. Finally, our most powerful combos are the Big Bang series and your sliding attack. Hitting circle starts the Big Bang combo, with each hit being more powerful than the last, repeating until the fifth Big Bang prompt, which sends you into a quick three hit combo, ending with a very high damage attack. The caveat to this is that in order to continue the combo, you need to hit on basically every hit. If you hit two times in the combo and then you miss your third hit, you cannot continue. You have to start over. This is a very long animation combo that should only be used when a monster is stunned, knocked out, or if you have a death wish. If you complete this combo though, you will have dealt a lot of damage. The last move to know about is your sliding attack. All you need to do to trigger this attack is hold down R2 and then slide down a slope. When your character goes into a slide animation, that's how you know that you're doing it. Release R2 to turn into a spinning lunatic with every single spin registering a hit on a monster. When you land, you'll end with a heavy high damage blow. This is also good to use for trying to mount a monster. This is why, as a hammer user, you should always try to fight on slopes whenever possible. It is very easy to do this attack, it's pretty quick, it deals tons of damage, and you look like a badass while doing it. One nice thing about the hammer is movement. With your hammer out, you still run pretty quickly compared to the other heavier weapons, which is great considering you need to stay as mobile as possible to capitalize on those moments where you can attack. So how about day-to-day -day combat? Well, it's not actually too bad to comprehend the hammer since your options are pretty limited as far as your combos go. You'll be looking for as many uppercut opportunities as you can, one charge, three hit combos, three charge standing still combos, and as many sliding spin attacks as you can possibly get in. This goes without saying, but you should always try to dodge roll in order to cut animation short whenever possible because the hammer has many animations that can be canceled early. A lot of its closing animations tend to go on for a while and you don't need them. Your goal is to get knockouts on the monster as much as possible. If you can fight on hills or ramps where you can slide, do it. You get in, you hit what you can, and you get out. This also goes without saying, but the more you learn about the monster that you're fighting, namely the timings and the ranges of their attacks, the more you'll be able to capitalize on getting those big hits. Consistency is what you need in order to get knockouts. If you're only getting in a couple of hits every so often, those knockout opportunities are not going to be common. Steady, continuous applications of damage are vital. Finally, when a monster does get stunned, you walk up to its head and you start bashing away with Big Bang. The head is your territory. If you see others trying to get in there, you say, hey, hey, get away from there. That's mine. That's my house, idiot. The skills that you're gonna be looking for are Slugger, Stamina Thief, and Part Breaker, as far as utility goes. But otherwise, Weakness Exploit, Attack Boost, and other things that boost damage are also acceptable. Slugger is probably among the best utility skills to get as a hammer, and I would say should be somewhere on your armor set most of the time. However, as I mentioned in the hammer build guide, there is some skepticism as to how valuable Slugger actually is right now, but for now, it's probably fine to use if you want to use it. If you're looking to fully invest in an armor set for Slugger, the Diablos armor set is for you. Just keep in mind that the heroics skill is not exactly for everyone. Jump Master also seems like a pretty good idea where you supposedly can't get hit out of mid-air when performing attacks, so your spinning attack. In my experience, it feels like it has done close to nothing to stop the end game monsters from slapping me out of the air anyway, which is why I don't think it's really needed at this time. I could be wrong though. As for which hammers to invest in, consider the Obliteration Footfall, please tell me someone else calls it the Football, 
the Diablo Shatterer 2, and the Malady's Fist 3 for Paralysis. The Malady, Malady, I, 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 I joke around, I, I call it the Malady, because I'm hilarious. Okay, the Buona Flora ain't too bad either if you're looking for poison application. The Footfall is for that Elder Seal, and it's pretty high raw damage. The Shatterer is for even more raw damage combined with a non-elemental boost gem. Just keep in mind that you have significantly reduced affinity. With the Fist 3 Hammer adding even more stun power to your kit, especially considering that quite a few monsters are weak to Paralysis. One final note about the Hammer is that in multiplayer, Monsters tend to require much more effort in order to get something to break on their body or for them to get knocked out. And even though you might feel like you're absolutely crushing it, you might not get something to break or get a monster stunned. That's just part of how the game is right now. I do think it should be slightly easier, just a little bit, to get something broken or stunned in a four player group. But don't worry if you're not getting the breaks or stuns in those larger groups. It's just really tough to do. The hammer is a pretty simple weapon if you're wanting to learn a new melee weapon or get familiar with melee weapons in general. It's not too much of an in the fray kind of weapon though, opting for in and out style attacks to land big hits in order to knock out monsters. It's not combo heavy, so you don't need to memorize too many attack combinations. You're in, you're out, you stun, you mash circle on its head, you collect items. I hope this guide helped. It was my first weapon guide, so please be gentle. If you enjoyed this video, a positive rating is appreciated. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.